your clients, your prospects, I can tell you if you're selling health insurance especially, they don't wanna talk about it, right? And so make it as simple as possible, make it palatable, make it fun. Hey guys, what's up? Brad Hannon here. I wanna to talk to you about the three things that you need to be talking about when discussing health insurance with your client. The only three things you really need to be talking about, right? A lot of times we take a simple concept, a simple process, we make it very, very, very difficult. I'll give you an example. Starting this YouTube channel. You know, I, you, can, you can make it as complex as you want, but in reality, the, 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 the concept is to give value that I have to the people out there and all you need is a camera and, and a face, right? So you can overcomplicate a simple process by, by adding a bunch of steps that you don't really need. So three things that you should be talking about when presenting health insurance, really the only three things in my opinion, because these categories will, will, will cover everything, right? By the time you get done presenting in this manner, your clients really shouldn't have any questions that you haven't already covered in some some aspect or to some degree, right? So the first thing, the first thing obviously that you're going to talk about is the day-to-day -day stuff, right? This is like uh, your doctor's visits. I literally call this day-to-day, -day, right? Doctor's visits, prescriptions, labs, X-rays, networks on the insurance plan, right? If you're new and you don't, if you're not familiar with some of these terms, you know, I want you to drop in the comments below, you know, I, reach out to me if you have questions on the things, you know, we love to see the comments and the feedback, but so as I'm going through, if I say co-insurance, deductible, something that you're not familiar with as an insurance agent, feel free to drop it below. I'd love to answer some questions there. Um, but the day-to-day -day stuff, it just, it just basically covers everything that you would use your health insurance for on a day-to-day right on on the the more minor stuff again prescriptions x-rays labs co-pays for doctors visits how it handles doctors visits whatever the case might be and i'm going to touch on that first because in my opinion it's the least important right i used to make jokes about uh you know hey if you want i'll pay for your wellness like I tell this to a client i only tell this to a few clients every now and again but hey if you want i'll i'll write you a check or you write me a check every month for 200 bucks i'll cover all your wellness right because 2400 a year it's gonna cover a lot of checkups. I mean, as long as they're not due for a colonoscopy that year, right? We uh, we should be able to do okay with that. So the day-to-day -day coverage, really like, that's not what you're paying for insurance for, right? You don't, you don't have auto insurance so that you can get an oil change and have that covered through your auto insurance provider. I think the same concept a lot of times, and there's obviously exceptions to this, applies to health insurance for the average person, right? When I say average, I just mean average health, right? So day-to-day. -day. That's the first thing. The second thing is accidents, right? Accidents happen. That's one of the major reasons we have health insurance. Still not the reason we have health insurance, but still one of the major reasons, right? Because accidents can get costly, broken arms. I recently had a friend fall out of a tree stand, like literally, uh, thankfully he's covered with me, but he literally fell out of a tree stand, busted his hip open, chipped a piece of his bone on his hip. So accidents happen, right? I'm here to tell you accidents happen. I've got a two-year-old right? To your boy, nonetheless. I see accidents every single day. Thankfully, those accidents haven't landed us in the hospital or anything just yet, but uh, the accident scenario is obviously one of the major reasons why you have health insurance because, you know, they happen, right? You, you, and you don't know they're coming. That's why they call them an accident. Um, so I'm going to cover whether I built in any accident coverage in this portion. I'm going to cover, you know, how that accident would be covered. I'll give some specific examples of accidents because why not? It fits into that category, right? So, hey, you know, if the client told me that they like to rollerblade, right? Um, you know, hey, if you're rollerblade, you, you mentioned, Mr. Client, that you love to rollerblade, right? If you love to rollerblade, uh, then I can imagine you've probably fallen a couple times. So let's just say, I know you're probably really good, but you might have fallen a couple times. Or maybe someone throws a stick in front of you. I don't know. And you, and that might not be an accident, then it's an on purpose. But you, you fall, you break an arm, you break a leg, you break a, a toe, whatever the case is, you're only going to pay $250 because that was an accident and you've got up to $10,000 worth of accident coverage, right? Or the money to cover your deductible, right? However, you've built that plan. And again, if that's confusing to you, I want you to drop in the comments below because there's a certain way that we like to bundle our plans that make this accident portion really, really appetizing to the client, right? Really palatable. It makes sense. And so, um, 
as we as we close out the accident section, I'm going to talk about or the accident category, if you will. I'm going to mention, hey, and you might be noticing the better, the worse your situation gets, the better this plan is actually going to cover you. So, you know, for the day to day side, and this is just a general outline, right? But the day to day side, you might have some uh, some out of pocket, right? You may pay for some doctor's visits, things like that. But as you get you know, into those more serious situations, accidents, critical illnesses, cancers, surgeries, that's where you'll see this coverage will actually work out for you a little bit better because that's what it's designed for, right? The big stuff. And then lastly, that's what I'm going to talk about is the major medical slash catastrophic side of the events, right? That can happen. So just kind of the, the bigger things, the what ifs. And uh, when I get into this part, I'm always going to remind the client that this is the real reason you have health insurance. Guys, Insurance is not something that uh, anybody, well, maybe some of you guys watching do. Um, hopefully, I do as an agent. I hope you do. You like talking about insurance, uh, but your clients, your prospects, I can tell you if you're selling health insurance especially, they don't want to talk about it, right? And so make it as simple as possible. Make it palatable. Make it fun. Understand where they're coming from and meet them where they're at. So. You know, hey, Mr. Klein, I understand that health insurance sucks. I just try to make it suck a little bit less. I'm trademarking that phrase too, by the way, so don't try to steal it. But uh, but hey, I know insurance sucks. I just try to make it suck a little bit less. The real reason you have the coverage, right, is this major medical catastrophic thing. And that's the last thing that I want to talk about, right? So however that plan is going to cover them, if they've got a $5,000 deductible, you know, if there's a $50,000 critical illness policy bundled in, you know, you're going to want to throw that in there. Hey, if the worst case scenario happens to you and you're diagnosed with cancer, you're going to get a lump sum check for $50,000. Uh, and, and as my man J.R. Jordan likes to say, uh, would you rather, if you, if you were diagnosed with cancer, would you rather get a check in the mail or a, a get well soon card, right? I don't know, but I'd rather have the get well soon card with the check inside, right? And so, uh, throw, some, so throw some things like that in there. You know, I, I definitely will say, I understand insurance sucks. I just try to make it suck a little bit less. Like, I will agree with the client more than I disagree on, hey, this plan, it's all right. You know, it gets the job done, so to speak. I, I explained to my clients that, hey, I'm an optimist in every other category of my life. But when it comes to insurance, because I have your best interests in mind, I'm a realist, right? I'm, I want to be realistic, right? I don't want to take an optimistic approach that hopefully this plan will cover you better than it really does. I want to take a really realistic approach and I want to share the good, the bad, and the ugly with the client. So again, I hope that helps. I want to keep it simple. I want to, I want to just dumb this down. I always use the KISS method myself. And so if that makes sense to you, great. I hope that helps. If it doesn't, if you have questions, if you have other things you'd like to see, throw it in the comments below. Make sure you like and subscribe and stay up to date with all that we're doing to add value in the under 65 health insurance space.